Where are we at? 34? 34. Welcome to episode 34 of the Dealers Compressed Podcast. My name is Paul J. Daly. I will be your host today. And it's always an exciting day when we have a guest because that means there are other people in this world that were willingly, willingly, that were willing to openly affiliate with us. So that's a total win. Every once in a while, my wife is willing to openly affiliate with me. Um, that's cool. So today, we, we alluded to this last week, but the guest is Greg Sioka Jr. of the Sioka Automotive Group in Pennsylvania, Lehigh Valley, and just opened their first point, Mercedes Point in New Jersey. And when I came away from this interview, some of my uh, some of my people asked me how it went, and frankly, I was a little speechless. And as you can imagine, it's not very often that I'm speechless, but I was speechless, and I was speechless for all the right reasons. I just was incredibly, incredibly impressed with the organization. So to give you a little story, a little background before we jump into the interview here, uh, we've been doing business with this dealership for a long time, actually under the reconditioning company, Image Auto and Rim Doctor, and you know, not, not with the agency, and I had never met uh, Greg Sioka Sr., who founded the organization, but I had met his son, and I was most impressed by the fact that the organization, like the managers and the directors and all the employees, respected his son, and his son is uh, younger than me, not like that saying much, but I, I went and I, I hit him with the wrong age, so we talk about that a little bit, but he's younger than me, let's put it, he's a millennial, and he's got the respect of this team in a way I've never really witnessed in an auto dealership before, not like, oh yeah, that's the boss's son, so we respect him, but they're like, he serves us, he's the future of this organization, he understands the car business, and I was like, wow, I was so impressed by that. Um, you know, I wanted to kind of go in for a deeper dive in an interview, and he graciously accepted and hosted us at their new Mercedes store, Mercedes of Flemington, and um, I was fortunate enough that Greg Sioka Sr. was uh, walking through or visiting for the day, and, you know, I just thought I'd get to say hi, and we ended up talking for like an hour or two after we just said hi. I think, you know, we just hit it off, and I think we see eye to eye on a lot of stuff, and it was like he just downloaded business wisdom into my brain while I was talking with him and into my heart. Honestly, this is a guy that's all heart. Well, I can't say he's all heart because frankly, he's just a sharp businessman. Um, but maybe I would say an unassuming businessman. And like, he's been building this business for a long time, started in his garage. Um, you know, his, he was raised by a single mother. He sold his first car at 17. You know, he bought it, cleaned it up, sold it for a $600 profit and kept doing that and now has uh, a, a well, well-respected group with 13 rooftops, cares about his people like crazy. Like, so every time I had a question about culture or anything, he just starts dropping things on me like, oh, hold on, let me take this out, right? It's a card, one side mission statement, the other side corporate expectations, which are really kind of like rules to live by or values. We talk about this in the interview. That's pretty dope. He also, you know, he also uh, says, oh, yeah, you know, we just finished a five-year plan. It's really a career path for uh, new employees and people that decide to trust us with their career and their life, right? And then he busts out this five-year career plan, which is really well thought out and strategic. I haven't seen any dealer do anything like this. Like, no wonder people are falling over themselves to work there. No wonder manufacturers are falling over themselves to approve new points for this dealership group. I was just speechless. So, um, as you can tell... I'm not speechless anymore about it, but it made a real impact on me, especially in an environment where dealers can sometimes have a bad name. This is a dealership who goes against all of those things. So I hope you enjoy this interview with Greg Sioka Jr. I asked Senior if he wanted to be, um, if he wanted to be part of the interview too, and you know what he said? He's like, no. He's like, I want my son to have have his moment to do the interview maybe we'll do one some other time i mean he is just a mentor at heart man we just left just open-handed and he gave me his number and he said if i need anything to help he sent me an email to thank me i mean it just mind blown so it's no surprise that when i met greg sioka jr and when we had our interview and had our interactions that oh this is obviously 
a young man who was raised by a very caring and wise father. So I hope you enjoy this interview with Greg Sioka Jr. If you're an auto dealer, I think you really should take some cues from this dealership group because boy, are they the real thing. And it is my hope through this podcast, it is my hope through everything that we do, we will continue to move the dealership base to a stronger place to be a place that employs empathetically, that cares about the community, invests wisely, and is seen as the by the community as a staple, as a great place to work, as um, a place that is honest and transparent um, and that contributes to the community. So all that to say, I hope you really enjoy this interview. Greg Sioka Jr., talk to you soon. We're here today with Greg Sioka Jr., Greg, thank you so much for giving us some time today. You've been, uh, it's been a great trip so far. Of course. Now I appreciate you guys coming in. You guys, you know, are all over the place and your vendors are always here helping out. And, you know, we can't speak any more highly than, than we do with, uh, you know, what you guys have done to support us and our success with our dealerships. So I appreciate you guys coming down and spend some time with us. Oh man, it's, it's, it's definitely our pleasure. Um, you know what Greg's mentioning, if, if you've been following the podcast for a while, um, started just as a com reconditioning company, Image Auto and Rim Doctor. Mm -hmm. So we've been serving the Sioka dealers for a while and you and I haven't had mm -hmm. much time to talk aside from today and a little bit in passing. I mentioned you in the podcast, uh, it was on Father's Day, right? Yes, and one yes of, it was. This <laughs> kind of what, that's kind of what led up to this. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that has impressed me most about the Sioka organization and you and your dad, your relationship and how I see the organization transitioning, the thing that made an impression was I started to talk to your managers when you were at the Subaru store and they really, really respected you. And it wasn't just because you're the boss, it was when you weren't around. And that made a big impact because that said to me that like your dad, Greg Sr., was doing something right. and. Like, I don't know, it just made an impression. You don't see it a lot. So I wanted the opportunity to kind of talk to you a little bit more. And I thought that, you know, our dealers would, would have some value. So let me just start by asking you, what positions have you held over the last few years? And kind of what are you up to now? Just so people can get a little context. Um, so I really started off at our Ford stores in Quakertown, Pennsylvania, in Siren, Pennsylvania, helping out after school, you know, just going down there, kind of getting familiar with the business. And I always love cars. I love, you know, keeping them detailed and clean and, it was kind of something that I, I wanted to do. You know, my dad was like, hey, you gotta work and you know, start earning some money. I just, I wanted to experience it. I wanted to start working on cars and, and get around the dealership. So I started doing that back when I was in high school. Um, then went to James Madison through the summers. I would come back and kind of intern, kind of do a mix of, you know, lot attendant, selling cars, helping out with the internet department. Just kind of jumping in a bunch of different, you know, departments to, to kind of get my beak wet a little bit as far as, you know, the different things in the automotive business. and and their dealerships and, and kind of work through what my dad's been doing as far as on a daily basis. So so what are the last like four titles you've held? So after I graduated <laughs> college, I started off selling cars at a Chevrolet store in Quakertown. Sold cars for probably about a year or so. Then I became finance director at our Subaru store in Allentown. Did that for a while. I was a new car manager, used car manager, um, a finance producer. Um, so I've bought a, done a bunch of different That's variety of jobs and it's been a lot of fun lot. and you know, I wouldn't want it any other way. It's the only way to really learn the business is by working through these different departments and you know you have to experience each department see how you interact with the different employees and customers and and see how each department kind of helps the dealership and, and what it means to the dealership as far as you know the success ultimately of that store and what are you doing right now i mean we're so, kind of sitting in this <laughs> big beautiful mercedes dealership right now well, so, tell me the story about what you're doing now and how you guys got here as a as a group so we recently acquired this mercedes store in flemington about three months ago um, it was, uh, you know, the inventory was was a little bit lighter, you know, than what we wanted. So I've really been helping with getting the used car inventory up to up to speed and, and acquiring more cars, whether it's through, you know, lease turn-ins, through Auto Trader, through customers, uh, through the auctions, and we're looking to certify as many Mercedes as possible. Really looking to make a splash in the uh, in the, in the area and hopefully make a name for ourselves and. Um, continued success that we've had with some of our other dealerships. Tell me, um, so we're three months in on this acquisition, mm -hmm. right? Three months in. Tell me what it was like used car wise when you acquired and what it is now. Three months, we're so, talking 90, <laughs> 90 days. So it's, it's been a long three months. <laughs> when we first took over, uh, there's probably less than 20 used cars. Uh, most of them were just the, the ex uh, loaner cars. So mm -hmm. basically, you take that loaner car out that we give customers for service. 
Uh, we'll put that in the lot. And then a couple of the other ones were 17 model, 16 model Mercedes. Anything other than a Mercedes was not on the lot. <laughs> so it's purely just newer Mercedes, nothing older than yep. 2016. Um, so it was very different from what we have at other dealerships. You know, we like to have that large selection off brand cars, cars with over 100,000 miles, cars with less than 100,000 yep. miles, kind of all over the spectrum to kind of appease all price points and, and types of customers out there. You know, we want to, you know, we want to bring in as many customers as possible, you know, from all different, you know, price points and, and brands. You know, we'll keep that Hyundai with 170,000 miles yep. and we'll have that $160,000 certified Mercedes um, to sell for all the different price points out there gotcha. and customers. So, so you, the Sioga Group kind of has um, a unique place in the market because you, you own a lot of rooftops. How many is it right now? Uh, 13 dealerships, I believe. Yep, yep. <laughs> we've been acquiring a lot in the last right, couple months. And you're months. in acquisition mode. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that we've talked about before on the show, um, you know, and also kind of Dale Pollock's parting, parting, you know, words of wisdom, like what are we going to see mm -hmm. in the next 12 months? He said, you're just going to see acquisition activity continue. And mm -hmm. the Sioka Group is somebody like we just had a, an amazing conversation with your dad, by the way, yeah, Greg he's, Sr. He's who, a good guy. <laughs> when learned I met, a lot from him. Well, we just, I mean, Plenty we just learn. spent like almost an hour and a half talking, which mm -hmm. was, a, I, I left that conversation saying I've definitely gotten more than I've given. It's in, funny, in every, this situation. every time I listen to him, I, I pick up something new. You know, there's always something I'm yeah. learning. You know, he's just got a wealth of knowledge. He's been doing it for over 40 years, like you said, and he, he's definitely seen different points of the, the, the business and the mm -hmm. recessions and the, the ups and the downs. And, you know, he's definitely in a high growth mode right now. We're looking to acquire more stores. So ultimately, our people can grow. We can promote from within. We're all about our own employees and having them grow yeah. rather than bringing in outside um, employees that might have been brought through a different culture. Mm -hmm. um, not that, you know, we, we, we do certainly look for other people out there and different employees from other brands, but, um, you know, to have our own employees that have grown through our culture and then can, you know, share that culture with, with other employees of ours is, is huge for us. Yeah, so it's like 13 going on 20. <laughs> um, you know, we're, we're, we'll we're looking to add touch a lot back more. next year. So we got a lot going on there. What do you see? I think it, this is important because. Um, the listeners of the show are often those who are the innovators, the ones that are paying mm -hmm. attention, the ones that are on the acquisition hunt, right? Not the mm -hmm. ones that are looking to sell, but typically the ones that are on the hunt like you are. And I think you're a great example. So like part of what I want to accomplish here is like trading some of the things that you think are key in those areas. And you have a unique perspective because you're not essentially leading the charge, right? But mm -hmm. because it's your dad and he's so mentor driven, Right. You have kind of a front row objective seat to like look back at the rest of the industry and also see what what your dad is leading the charge to do. So what what do you see as your big like the biggest reason that the acquisitions make sense at this point in the game? A lot of times they're perfectly running stores. You know, their employees are great. Everybody's great. It's just, you know, the dealers just looking to go in another direction and, and just tired of that day to day grind, I guess you can say, of, of sometimes what the automobile business can be. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we're trying to find those opportunities. A lot of the manufacturers are reaching out to us to bring us those opportunities about dealers that, that might be exiting or dealers that are underperforming where, you know, that, that existing dealer is, is just, you know, I don't want to say bleeding money, but they're just not performing the way they want to perform and the way the manufacturer wants to perform. So the manufacturer is then reaching out to us so that yeah. we can acquire that store. That's, and hopefully a, that's a really up. interesting point. And um, that kind of ties back to something we had talked about a little bit earlier. We were just talking about with your dad. Um, mm -hmm. Why don't you tell me about the pillars, the four, the four pillar stool that you guys, yes. you know, kind of operate in, and uh, and we'll talk about the one that I find most interesting in a minute. Yeah. So we, uh, our number one, we believe our employees are everything. That's how we grow. That's how we expand. Um, that's how we run our day-to-day -day operation. So employee satisfaction is most important. Mm -hmm. um, customer satisfaction comes with that. Um, ultimately, the manufacturers, you got to have a great relationship with them. And uh, if you have all three of those running correctly, you're going to ultimately have uh, success, mm -hmm. you know, and you're going to be able to grow and expand and acquire more stores. So you got to have all those things running smoothly. But most importantly, that, that the employee satisfaction right. is going to lead to that customer satisfaction, yeah, which will ultimately lead to that, that sale. 100%. And I think that in the industry, you know, you, you kind of see the, the customer and the employee satisfaction kind of get juxtaposed depending on who you're talking mm -hmm. to and what their philosophy is. Um, you know, you adopt something that is really close to my heart is where if you take care of the people who have trusted you with their livelihood and trusted you with these years mm -hmm. in their career, if you take care of them first, 
the natural byproduct is happy customers and Absolutely. a great customer experience. The one thing that I wanted to talk about that I found so interesting is that third one that you mentioned. And the fact that you actually have manufacturer relationships in kind of your core tenets of importance. And I know we do it sometimes on the show and I hear it a lot. The manufacturer dealer relationship is just very compressed. It's very tension filled. And you hear a lot of the griping and a lot of the, the hard parts and the tough parts about those relationships. But you have a, a slightly different perspective or maybe a very different perspective on what treating the manufacturer as a valued partner actually does for the whole ecosystem and how it turns uh, around. So that's the ultimate partner for success. You know, they're the ones that are going to be helping us out through the tough times, through the good times. Um, and if you don't have a relation with them and you're, you're not talking to them on a daily basis or weekly basis, you know, you're going to be out of the market. They're not going to assist you with any uh, new programs or, or customer wants or needs or, or changes in the environment. Um, you know, if, depending on who you ask, which dealers, you know, a lot of them have, this negative connotation towards them because, you know, they'll try to push the inventory sometimes or, or try mm -hmm. to do other things that, you know, they think is going against their beliefs or what they're trying to do to succeed in the uh, automobile business. Mm -hmm. um, so ultimately, you got to you got to have a great relationship with them to ultimately grow your business, to, to you know, build your business and, uh, you know, to ultimately provide more opportunities in the future for, for maybe another brand of that that manufacturer. Interesting. Yeah, you're you're. Um, Greg Sr. popped in right before we started mm -hmm. with uh, a finance, uh, finance. I don't know what her role was. Liaison. For, Liaison for, for Mercedes, Mercedes, Mercedes Financial. And he pops his head in typical Greg Sr. <laughs> fashion. He's like, hey, if you've talked to anybody and you have the opportunity, let them know that Mercedes Finance was an absolute pleasure to deal with through this acquisition. <laughs> so we got to give a little plug on Absolutely. behalf of your dad. Absolutely. Just if he made it important, then we've done our duty. Yeah, Mary, and Mary with uh, Mercedes-Benz Financial. She does a great job for us. Um, and I really can't speak negatively as far as any of our, our uh, manufacturers or financial uh, liaisons for any of our brands. You know, they all do a great job. And, you know, like I said, they want to help us succeed and we want to help them do well. We want them to look great in the eyes of their man manufacturer and, and hopefully, you know, continue with their success and grow with their company yeah, just as together. we're trying to grow ourselves. You know, it's all about growth and, you know, you have to continue growing in this business to, to succeed. Speaking of growth and speaking of doing crazy things that haven't been done in a long time. There's something really neat going on. And I, I don't know, what's your favorite football team? Philadelphia Eagles. I didn't even know. I didn't know that. <laughs> fly Eagles fly. I did not know that. Super Bowl chips. Everybody knows I'm lying, right? <laughs> I know just, you're a big Philadelphia fan. Yeah, everybody fan. knows I'm from Philly and I just need a reason to talk about it once a week. And so like even your accent gives it away. Uh, like no, people know it. where I My am. My dad's accent they know obviously why. is a lot stronger than mine. Oh sure, whatever. <laughs> I grew outside of Philadelphia, part of Philadelphia, but um, so, but talking about Philly, talking about Subaru, talking about doing things like Sioka size, like what's going on in Philly with you guys? So not too far from the Eagle Stadium, we um, were given the open point for Subaru. God bless you. In Center City, uh, Philadelphia. So there's been nothing like it in probably three decades, I want to say. And uh, it's going to be kind of the first of its kind. It's going to be a very large building. We had to acquire three properties, uh, but it's going to be about a four-story uh, building with about 100 cars for parking in the top two levels with about 1,000 cars that can be parked below on the first level. So it's going to be massive. Wow. It's going to be huge advertising. We're extremely excited. We definitely want to partner with Philadelphia. We're going to be donating a lot to the, the local hospitals and teaming up with Philadelphia hospitals um, to hopefully give back to our community where we hope to make a difference down there. Um, but we're very excited for it. We're probably about 18 months to maybe 24 months out from it officially being all set up and done. Mm -hmm. uh, but once it's done, we're, we're very excited to get down there and hopefully make it a positive influence for our community down there in Philadelphia that we've been growing up around our whole lives and you grew up around. And oh, yeah. it's such a big city that I, I think uh, there's a lot of people that could benefit from um, a lot of outreach from, from a, a dealer down there, all ultimately, day. or any business for that matter. But with our sheer presence down there, and as far as what Subaru thinks we can sell down there, I think we'll have a lot of capabilities to, to give back to our community and to give it back to those around there. So yeah. we're, we're extremely excited. <laughs> when, when, do you, when do you start? So a couple months from now, we're, we're going to start construction on the uh, property. So What is it currently? It's not current. Is it like it, nothing, just space right now? Building from there's the about up? two or three 
buildings that are pretty old that we're probably going to renovate or mm -hmm. uh, build up upon. So there, there's not much going on down there in this area right now. Yeah. So we're uh, we're definitely excited to get down there and start moving some construction around. We have my dad's right hand man that he mentioned. Yep. Uh, as far as my uncle Paul, that, yeah. that does a lot of our construction and projects. He's a busy guy for the He's next been busy. couple of months. Yeah, we yeah. just <laughs> we're about to complete our Audi store um, in Allentown. That that's been waiting for about three, three and a half years now. Yeah. I think you saw what we were working out uh, oh, of yeah. before. <laughs> it's amazing what you guys accomplish out of a trailer. <laughs> we don't like to call it a trailer. Like I, I know. A mobile it, unit. It's a mobile home. It's not mobile, a trailer, mobile. right? Yeah. But it's three of them put together. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah. it's been a lot of challenges down there. Our management staff and employees down there have been extremely helpful. Um, and the customers down there have bought cars from us. They've been extremely uh, considerate for, for what we're going through. Yeah. You know, obviously when you spend, you know, anywhere from 30 to $100,000 on an Audi, you expect to have this beautiful oh, facility yeah. and the parking lot all paved. And yep. they've been having to work through or, or drive through a couple different things and obstacles. And it's, it's, it's definitely been a challenge for all of us. Literally but, and figuratively. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> been a lot of potholes along the way. <laughs> the fact that sales have gone up so much while in the temporary facility yeah. is indicative that the experience must be worth it, even as it is, even mm -hmm. as it stands. It's, it's a big testament to, to what's going on in there. Yeah, we, we definitely pride ourselves on our processes, our culture. You know, we think we have the most unique culture out there mm -hmm. that is way different than any other dealer group in, in, in the world. Um, obviously, I'm a little biased towards it, but <laughs> I'm a little but just more from the feedback. I'm a little more objective than you can be <laughs> in this situation, and I can absolutely say it is definitely an anomaly. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, kind of following that thread a little bit, um, I know that the car business is a lot of family businesses, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of generational pat handoffs, right, and mentoring things that happen. Uh, I've mentioned it, you know, that this is one that I see going really, really well. Um, so I know there are fathers who have sons in the business that are watching and listening. Definitely, I, I know there are sons that have fathers in the business that are probably came across the podcast before their dad did just because mm -hmm. of the nature of it. Um, why don't you uh, give a little bit of advice to dads, the dads on paying attention, like what are some of the things or one or two of the things that your dad did right that really made an impact with you that really, you know, kind of encourage you to keep going forward? I think one of the most important things was um, you didn't, force us to be in the business you know mm -hmm. he always said you know this is your choice you can do whatever you want and, and a big part of that was you know go to college you know see what's out there see the different you know mm -hmm. uh, job fields that you can you can go through um you know because the car business might might not be for you yeah. you know it's not for everybody yeah. you know there's there's people plenty of people out there that could care less about cars or the business you know they want to stay away from it yep um and so obviously you know being in a family there, there you might have children that that say hey you know i want to go more towards that artistic side or i want to be an architect or i want to be something else but you know i think the biggest takeaway is that that make sure you have that option available mm -hmm. that if, if the car business isn't what you want to do you know, you can't be you can't be forced into it, or else you're not going to succeed. Yeah, you're not going to have any success. You're not going to want to do it. You're not going to want to grow the company. Um, but so if you, you weren't have that forced. Passion, yeah, you weren't forced. You know, I wasn't forced. You chose whatsoever. It. And same with my other two brothers. You know, the one still at Penn State. The other one is working at our uh, Princeton Chevrolet store. You know, he went to Villanova Law School, and he's uh, he's uh, qualified for New Jersey and Pennsylvania. But he, you know, could go through a different field. And he did work for a. Uh, 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 an attorney for about a year before he came over to our Princeton Chevrolet store. So yep. he did kind of get a feel for the, he for realized what he wanted to see if he wanted to do something else or he did want to come into the car business. Um, and you know, I kind of always knew he wanted to come eventually in the car business, but wanted to get some experience outside of it before he did, which I, th I think will make him even better, uh, as a professional, you know, business person. So, um, I think the biggest, th biggest thing is to have options to always be supportive, um, you know, to always encourage, you know, to, to do better. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, you know, he instilled that work ethic into me from a young age because, you know, he had to do it. He had to work the three jobs as he was talking about and yeah. kind of start from nothing with $700 in his mom's garage and, and kind of build this, this company out of that garage. You yeah. know, so I just have so much respect for, for <laughs> what he's done. It's, it's crazy to think about, you know, from, from 700 bucks in a mom's garage to the 13 dealerships, yeah. you know, it, it's the, the American dream and what, you know, everybody wants to, to, to do in life, you know, it's to, to build from nothing to something huge, just like Microsoft, a lot of the big companies out there yeah. started in garages or Absolutely. from humble beginnings, no, just I like you did. That. You started from, part. from working in a dealership and, yeah. and kind of took it from to another level. So I think anybody out there can take something to the next level. Um, you know, they just got to be willing to do it and, and have that drive and 
you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna have a lot of failure along the way. Yeah, you know, you're gonna have a lot of adversity. Um, you know, my dad certainly went through that. Obviously, when I came into it, you know, I didn't quite go through the struggles that he went through, which mm-hmm. which you know I can only imagine. Um, but I can't put myself exactly in his shoes. Different and, and challenges, what he went though. Through. Different definitely ones. different challenge. <laughs> All right, so I got this card, and your dad gave this to me, and it says corporate expectations, which is, you know, no offense. But it sounds really scary. We we have to change the name. And one hundred percent, you don't have to. I'm just saying. But the when content I read it, is really good. The content's amazing. So I just want to go through these. There, uh, the mission is on one side, and on the back are thirteen corporate expectations. But really, these are thirteen kind of principles that you guys operate by. Correct. Which Absolutely. is probably better. And I think it's great to have expectations. It's great to have them written. And mm-hmm. where do people carry these? In their wallets or uh, in their pockets. So, Wait, so they have to have these. You know what, what other company does this? Sim- tractor Supply is one. Really? Look up I Tractor. I would not have guessed that. <laughs> I wouldn't have either. And they're going to say like Microsoft or Dell or. <laughs> look up Tractor Supply Core Values and you will be very impressed. Huh. So if you've never done it, look up Tractor Supply Company's Corporate Values. Um, so we're talking about Sioka today. And number one, this is something we hit on earlier and it's kind of like the, the pillars of the stool, but this is kind of a math equation. So we're gonna talk about math. So for all the people that are like me, it's okay, it's easy, it has, <laughs> we have pictures. We'll put pictures in the video. Success, employee satisfaction equals customer satisfaction plus manufacturer relationships equal success. So this is the equation that you guys operate on. So why is that the way it is? I think the most important thing is uh, for our employees and our associates to be uh, extremely happy with you know where they work, uh, what they do for uh, their job, and ultimately if they're happy, that's going to show to the customer. They're going to see that the employees are having fun here. They're enjoying their uh, culture, you know, and where they work. And ultimately, um, you know, you have to have the manufacturer on board as well. You have to have them partner. They're an ally. Um, they're here for for our success. We're here for their success. You know, it's a mutual benefit. And if uh, one of them's failing, then probably the other one's going to be failing as yeah. well. So, um, all three of those are going to equal ultimately success. Yeah. Number two, this is good. Treat others better than you expect them to treat you. So we have treat others like you want to be treated. Golden rule. Mm-hmm. Uh, we talk about that in my company. Um, but this takes it a step further. Treat others better than you expect them to treat you. Above expectations, yeah, absolutely. You gotta really go above and beyond um, because that's that's how you want to be treated. You mm-hmm. know, it, it all comes full circle, and you gotta pay it forward. Number three, very practical and simple. One word: listen. Right. Absolutely. You get a lot of salespeople in the automotive business. You <laughs> know, they're all talking. Like talk. They're all talking, <laughs> and there's not enough listening. And and that's how you really you know move forward with a lot of things you know is by listening and, so and listening to other people's ideas and yeah. you know you have those people that are more mathy that might not be as vocal and mm-hmm. you know you gotta listen to what they're saying because they might have some really great ideas to, to move the company sure forward they do mm-hmm. um and listening really is the gateway to we talk about empathy a lot on the show mm-hmm. right and if you don't listen you can't understand where someone's coming from absolutely so i love Open that ears. number three number four change is good for the company. Now, I love that this is really set in stone from the beginning Mm -hmm. and and put down because I think naturally people hate change, right? We fear it because it's unfamiliar. But um, your dad, Greg Sr., kind of set this in motion and and why is change good for the company? Um, Because as you mentioned, you know, if you're not growing, you're you're plateauing, you're not moving forward, your your employees aren't growing, uh, both personally and uh, business-wise. Um, so ultimately, you have to you have to embrace it. It's mm-hmm. going to happen. There's no question about it. The market's going to change. The the brands are going to change. Mm-hmm. The manufacturers going to change. Um, you know the the recession. You know it's going to happen at some point. You know there's going to be changes in the economy. So you have to embrace it. And if those that embrace it are going to have the most success. They're the ones that are are moving forward and not plateauing. And ultimately, you know when you acquire a new store, we promote a lot of people from within. They're going to change jobs, change yeah. positions, change where they're working from. But ultimately. They're going to have a lot more success in their in their business and yeah. personal life. I think something also that we often forget that growth, Absolutely. like towards good things, is change. Right? Do you want more than you have now? Well, then you're going to have to change. <laughs> right? It's even like a positive change is also change. So absolutely, it's very cool. Absolutely. Um, number five: nothing but business is to be discussed once a meeting starts. I think that's just real practical. You know, I'm the worst at this, by the way. <laughs> and Patrick will tell you, and anyone else, my team spends most of their time roping me back in. <laughs> there's, because there's, I like the people side, but I will 
follow that rabbit trail like you, you all the way. You definitely have to have a mix of both. Yeah. Obviously, you know, I, I think it's great to talk about personal things and, and your life and, and sports and stuff before mm-hmm. meeting starts. But then once it starts, absolutely, you can't be transitioning back or, yeah. you know, you're, you're there for a meeting for a reason. It's to get stuff done and, and uh, hopefully grow. And it respects everybody else's time, honestly, absolutely. is what it comes down to as well. Um, this number six brings something to every meeting you attend. I like this because it it takes out the like, the the just the numb minded sitting around the table. <laughs> yeah. Why do we meet right. here again? Uh, what are we doing? Uh, right. Why are we having this meeting? You yeah. Know, there's a meaning for a reason, and it's to improve upon what you're doing and right. to talk about ideas. What and can you contribute? Exactly. You I love bring the something. posture. This is this next one. Number seven is old school. If you are on time, you're ten minutes late. So I don't, I'm sure that's a hard one to hold the line on, but I get that mentality for sure. I, I think we have a lot of people that, that follow that to heart. That's cool. Mm-hmm. And it makes you, honestly, again, it shows everyone you respect their time and you're Absolutely. Ready, ready to suit up and show up. Well, that's another one. No, kind of number 10. We'll hit that in a second. Um, I don't know is not an excuse. So number eight is I don't know isn't an excuse. So w- why that? You, you got to have a reason for something, you know, mm-hmm. nothing gets accomplished if you, if you say, I don't know, Yep. you have to say, Hey, you know, this is what I was thinking and that's why I did it. You know, there, there's a reason there's cause and effect to everything. So you, you just got to figure out why. Number nine, no gossip or swearing. That's never violated. Is it? <laughs> never. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think we do a pretty good job, but once in a while in the excitement of the deal or, or the, the daily grind, sometimes things slip accidentally and you know, we always remind our associates, you know, hey, number nine, you can't do that. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, usually once you hear it a couple of times, you get better with it. But if it happens to the best of us. If you're listening right now, the smile on Greg's face is going <laughs> to give away a little bit it's, of, of... It's a crucial one to be on there. Yeah. Because, I mean, obviously, the gossip and swearing are, are pretty different things. Like, swearing is almost like, uh, like a proper place for that you know what i mean you know but the yeah. gossip side is a little bit different the gossiping side it's a lot more damaging that's mm-hmm. that's a cancerous thing to a culture and a dealership yeah. so that one's a definitely you know, something that has to be followed without a question Super low obviously tolerance. the other one has to be right. followed as well but things do slip up once in a while yep. it's not gonna end it's the world passion. <laughs> it's passion, it's passion. Yeah. exactly sometimes passion's good it gets a point across sometimes uh, but you got to be careful with what comes out <laughs> yep yep you get it number 10 dress for success Absolutely. We, we believe in dressing the part, you know, dressing professional. I mentioned before our finance managers, you know, they, they all have white or light blue shirts, mm-hmm. button down collar with a tie on, dress pants, slacks, you know, either dark color or, or gray mm-hmm. with brown or black shoes that match the belt. Mm-hmm. Now, they're, they're a banker role that's dealing with a lot of sensitive information, mm-hmm. dealing with a lot of money, financial transactions. They have to dress the part to ultimately gain the trust of the customer and help facilitate the uh, transaction. I think that's the only reason I started a creative agency is so this would equate to dressing <laughs> for success for me. Just truly really self-serving. You, you want to hear what's funny is uh, <laughs> when I was a finance director, no finance manager or director in the company had facial hair. Oh, so I kind of was that like an unspoken the, rule? It was kind of an unspoken rule. Okay, you know, we have some resources, you know, with with Ethos Group and our, our warranty companies and everything, but we uh, you know believe in no facial hair. So obviously, when I was a director, I. I've had it for years now, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and can, I can't can tell relate. a fellow associate to shave your face if I'm not doing it myself. So I was the one that kind of broke the ground. Oh, with, I was going to uh, say you didn't shave, the beard, did you? With the facial hair. No, no okay. I didn't know which you way know, you were going with that. I don't think that. it's people, people like no, beards, we're, you know? <laughs> we're a modern company now. Absolutely. Like, people do that. got to keep up with the trends. And <laughs> you know, funny story. I just went to the eye doctor a couple of days ago, and how you look absolutely matters. So the nurse, you know, she did her thing, and then she flipped me to who I thought was the doctor, and but she was dre- I'm trying not to get in trouble. Um, young woman dressed like she was going to the mall, right? <laughs> and I'm following her to the exam room and I'm thinking, like, is this the doctor? And I found out later she was, I think, a resident. But even so, like, like that person's that in my eye in with head. like a needle and it did. And a lab coat would have went a really <laughs> long way. Could have been a stranger off the street. It could then. be a total <laughs> moron. Your eyes and total moron. But if you're in a lab coat, and- <laughs> try, I think you should try it sometime. Just put on a lab coat and see if people treat you differently. I think they will. Um, number 11, a process is only a process if it's done 100% of the time. Now, you guys are very process oriented. I'm learning. Absolutely. And why is that important for you? I think especially when you start growing as a company and adding more dealerships, mm-hmm. you know, if you don't have that defined process, then when you go to acquire a new store, it's going to take forever to, to implement 
what you want, your culture, your, your way of doing business, mm-hmm. your way of handling customers. You got to have that process in place. And when we promote from someone from one dealership to the next, they grew up in our process and our culture, and they can implement that at the new store mm-hmm. that will be passed down different levels to all the associates at that store. So as soon as you, you break that process, mm-hmm. other people see that, they start breaking the process, and then you don't have a process anymore thing more and then you have basically that's it. the inmates run the prison that's right <laughs> you know everything kind of falls apart so you got to have that in place you have to abide by it and you have to follow it every single day every single hour of the day this next one number 12 is one that i love um praise publicly and coach privately absolutely that's something my dad has ingrained in my head from when i was little <laughs> you know the the old school car business you know yeah. you had these people yelling yep. in the meeting yelling oh, yeah. at employees for for messing something up but that does nothing positive. It just brings down that employee, yep. brings down that person as as an individual, you know, not just even in a business sense, mm-hmm. personally. We'll go home that night. You know, that's not something you could just put at the door and forget yeah. about. You know, you're going to be thinking about that all night yes. and, and, you know, for weeks, months to come. I mean, it could really destroy someone. So we believe, you know, if you did something right, we're going to congratulate you in front of everybody. We're going to praise you publicly. That goes a lot further than that that monetary gift or value, mm-hmm. um, you know, is that recognition. But if you do something wrong, we'll pull you to the side. We'll get you coached up. But mm-hmm. you can't just bring someone down in front of everybody. That just destroys somebody's, Man, um, you know, character. That builds so much credibility when you do that. Uh, last one, number 13, do the right thing when no one is watching. Absolutely. Right. That's uh, a book called Mr. Garcia that we hand out to every person that we either interview what or a message comes on board to Garcia is a little book yeah that goes a long way I think it's one of the most circulated uh, books out there in the world we'll link it up in the podcast notes for sure. and it's about doing the right thing when no one's looking you know carrying that message when, when no one says to carry that message mm-hmm. um, you know and ultimately you're gonna grow as a person if you do that and you're gonna help out the company and everybody around you and somebody's gonna help you out when you don't even ask them to do that yeah and it's gonna go a long way and can help yeah. out everybody well that this list right here we'll post them too i mean that's a worthwhile list yeah and the fact that you have a list i think is the first step for dealers who don't have a list just write down five things right and start to hold two of them yeah we built that a couple years ago and it's it's been something that we've stuck through and you know just like a process you know if you develop yes these these different values you know this mission statement you have to follow it you have to have it in front of you every day yeah um and your employees you know associates they have to know what you know, you're looking for on a daily basis. I love it. I love it. Yeah. No, it's good stuff. So, uh, kind of parting comment, if you could say one thing to all the dealers who are watching and know that they wouldn't hear it and kind of your one word of advice for them, like that you would put above all the other was, what would you say to them? Treat your employees right. I think you have to treat them better than anybody else out there because they're the ones that are going to face the customers. They're going to be the first contact with a customer. Uh, they're going to carry your message, your corporate values. You know, that's yeah. that's the initial representation of your your brand, of your dealership, of of myself. You know, is that initial associate that greets that customer. Mm-hmm. So you have to treat them right, and they're going to be happy if you do, and and provide a great culture. Yep. And that happiness, as we said, you know, is going to translate into the customer, which will ultimately translate into a, a, a sale, hopefully, and success. So yeah. um, you have to do that. Good parting words. Greg, thanks for giving us some time. Absolutely. It's Thank you, my friend. Awesome. <laughs> it's good. Thanks. We'll be back. <laughs> I hope so. So there you have it. Greg Sioka Jr. Just a great interview, a great time with a great group, with great men. You know, Greg Sioka Jr. and Sr. Man, I just talk about an organization that's got it together. And everyone I met there was amazing. The men and women that run that store, that are part of that organization, every one of them, top shelf. Bravo, kudos. Thanks for listening to episode 34. May encourage you to do better, to be better. See you next week.